Hi, I'm Rick Steves. I'm in Budapest right here on the beautiful Danube. I was going to say Blue Danube, but it's just the beautiful Danube. I'm with my guide, Andrea McKay. Andrea, Hi, see ya. And I'm learning a lot about what's going on in Hungary here politically. And of course, uh, they've got this dynamic where they've got uh, uh, an autocrat, uh, Viktor Orban, and he's the prime minister. And this is the end of a huge building, the size of the parliament building in London. And a whole floor on this end of the parliament is filled with Viktor Orban's office. And uh, this parliament was built uh, in Pest here on this side of the Danube. Uh, on the other side is Buddha. And that where for a thousand years have been kings and emperors, palaces and so on. And Orban has decided, yeah, I'm prime minister and uh, I'm here in the parliament running the legislative branch. But just this year, he decided to move his office over there to the big white building on top of the hill that's next to the royal palace. And uh, this is symbolic, isn't it, Andrea, of a, of a man who really wants to think of himself not as a people's representative, but more like a royal. Yes, exactly. I mean, it's moving away from that idea that the parliament should represent the interest of the people and they should not be ruled, but their interests should be represented. So it's a, it's a different thought. And I've been learning from Andrea all the parallels. I mean, it's a very fragile democracy here without all of the checks and balances that we have in the United States. And Orban's party has a supermajority, two-thirds, so they can essentially rewrite the Constitution. They've rewritten the Constitution in so many ways, and now they're celebrating the Constitution, and a copy of that Constitution is in all of the public institutions and in all the schools and so on. He has changed the electoral system so that he can get more people to vote for him. Uh, and he does that, for instance, by giving people who speak Hungarian in neighboring countries double citizenship. And they're all thankful to have a Hungarian citizenship, so they're going to vote for Orban. Also, they've got the communist heritage. And when you've got the communist heritage, a lot of less sophisticated people, when it comes to voting, they think there's only one choice. Left would be communist and right would be freedom. Well, right now they've got a choice. Socialist or left or democracy or far right. And that would be Viktor Orban and this party. So it's just a scary thing. The European Union would like to rein in the Hungarians, but in order for the European Union to discipline one of its countries, you've got to have unanimity. And if Hungary is about to get clamped down on by the rest of Europe, they've got one friend to break that unanimity, and that's Poland. And when Poland needs help, they've got Hungary. So we've got a very interesting impasse these days, and Orban's friends are really rich, and they own the media. So the less educated people in the countryside, they don't get much of a story. And to make matters even worse, the local PBS has become just a mouthpiece of Orban's party. A long time ago, they were the Young Democrats. Andrea remembers when he was standing like a hippie in blue jeans. And in what year was that? Right, so back in 1989, when there was the reburial funeral service of revolutionary hero Imre Nagy on Hebrew Square, he was the one. He was the uh, celebrator of the people. It was freedom. And today, I guess power corrupts. So we're seeing. A very interesting dynamic, and we're hoping for democracy and civil liberties here in uh, Budapest and in Hungary. But it's a great place to travel, even though the Prime Minister is moving over to the Royal Palace. Happy travels from Budapest on the beautiful Danube.